Okay, in this video we're going to do more double integrals in polar, so I'm going to do two examples. Um, polar integrals, if you're doing them by hand, they tend to take a while because there's a lot of trig involved usually. Uh, so let's get started. So we have the integral from 0 to radical 2, from y to radical 4 minus y squared of 1 over the quantity 1 plus x squared plus y squared, uh, and then dx dy. So if you do enough of them, you look at that and you immediately think, this is definitely something I'm supposed to do in polar. Um, so what I like to do, um, if you watch the other video, you know, I like to pull off some inequalities from the bounds. So I know that x is between y and radical 4 minus y squared, and I know that y is between uh, 0 and radical 2. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those to um, kind of construct the uh, xy region that we're looking at, so that I can convert that to polar. Um, so what I do, I, I don't really view this as a direct conversion. Because uh, you kind of have to think about it while you go through, but nothing wrong with thinking. So, uh, first thing is, um, let's graph. So, uh, I graphed uh, y equals x because x equals y is the same as that. Um, and I graphed a, well, I, I graphed quarter circle, but uh, radical 4 minus y squared, x equals radical 4 minus y squared is actually a um, semicircle. Um, but then uh, y has to be between 0 and radical 2. So, uh, if you look at the x-bounds, like y has to be on the left, and the circle part has to be on the right, so there's really only uh, this little region that we're dealing with. Okay, so now that we figured that out, we want to write that um, using polar bounds. So, that's definitely pi over 4. The x-axis is definitely theta equals 0. Um, and then this curve is a circle with a radius of 2, so that's just r equals 2. So, the radius goes from 0 all the way out to 2. So, now I can write a, uh, an integral. So I do need to convert this, um, but anytime I see x squared, x squared plus y squared, I'm replacing it with r squared. So we got everything we need, so let's rewrite our integral. So 0 to pi over 4, 0 to 2, and then it's going to be um, 1 over radical 1 plus r squared. And then remember, you have to multiply in an extra r, so that's the thing that people forget, which makes polar integrals impossible for them. So it's times r, and then dr d theta. And now we can just kind of do the problem. So um, 0 to pi over 4. Uh, it's really r over radical 1 plus r squared. So there should have been a 2 and a 1 half. But then you add 1 half, uh, blah, blah, blah. Things cancel out, and you end up with this. So if you don't know how to do that, just work it out on paper, and you'll definitely get it. And now I'm going to plug in uh, 2 and 0. So this is ending up a lot easier than it maybe would have seemed. So. If I plug in 2, I get radical 5. If I plug in 0, I get radical 1, so it's minus just 1, and then d theta. And then uh, I'm going to integrate with respect to theta, which means just throw a theta in there. Um, 0 to pi over 4, and so I get pi over 4, radical 5 minus 1. Um, so not really all that bad, um, and kind of fortunately no trig showed up, um, because we had constant bounds, which is uh, always a blessing. So let's look at another one where that won't happen. So now I've got uh, 1 to 2, 0 to radical 2x minus x squared, which maybe you're not familiar with, um, of 1 over the quantity x squared plus y squared, which is definitely just r squared, squared, and then dy dx. So let's write the inequalities. So 1 to 2 for x, and 0 to that radical for y. Maybe you're not familiar with what that y thing is. So let's uh, look at it a little more closely. So we have that. I'm going to square both sides. I'm going to move everything to one side. I'm going to complete the square without showing any work. Um, and so now I know that it's a circle centered at 1, 0 with a radius of 1. Um, and I know that I only want the top part of it because y is between 0 and that. Um, so let's see. we got this. And... Okay, so I have that, and let's uh, let's write that in polar. So I'm going to add um, the line y equals x to this, because that's where those two curves intersect, which you can kind of just figure out um, if you think about it, um, or you could let x equal 1 and plug into that radical, and you get y equals 1. So they intersect at 1, 1, which means along the line y equals x. Um, so let's get some polar bounds for that. So theta goes from 0 to pi over 4. Now I have to convert these, um, these curves. So uh, this one is r equals 2 cosine theta because it's a circle with a diameter of 2 centered on the positive x-axis. 
um, which if you don't know how to do that, uh, I have another video about writing circles in Polar, which would probably be helpful for you. And then I have x equals 1. x equals 1 is the same as r equals secant of theta. And the reason that's true is because I know that x is equal to r cosine theta, and you just kind of plug in and solve for r. Okay, so now I'm ready to write this integral. So here we go. So 0 to pi over 4, secant to 2 cosine of theta. And then um, I know that uh, x squared plus y squared is r squared, so it's 1 over r squared squared. And then don't forget here you have to multiply by r and then dr d theta. So this can be rewritten. So now you can tell we're going to end up with a lot of uh, trig stuff involved here. So r to the negative third. So that's easy enough to integrate. So that's plus 1 times the reciprocal. So that's going to give me uh, negative 1 half r to the negative 2 from secant to 2 cosine theta and then ultimately d theta. So let's plug in and I get this. So that's going to be negative 1 over uh, 8 cosine squared of theta, and then minus, and then negative 1 over 2 secant squared theta, d theta. So I'm showing a lot of steps so that I don't make mistakes. Um, and then this, I'm going to rewrite using some trig. So 0 to pi over 4, negative 8, 1 over cosine is secant, so that's negative 1 eighth secant squared, and then... Um, 1 over secant is cosine, so I get plus 1 half cosine squared of theta. Now I'm going to need a lot more space, so let's move to the next page. Here we go. So to integrate this, uh, secant squared is easy, right, because the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so that one's good. Um, cosine squared, I'm going to use an identity. I know that cosine squared of theta is 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. So if I were to integrate um, cosine squared, that'd be the same as integrating that 1 half, blah, blah, blah. So pull the 1 half out. Um, integrate, you get 1 half theta plus 1 fourth sine of 2 theta. Uh, so now I can actually show my integral. So it's going to be negative 1 eighth tan of theta plus 1 half, and then 1 half theta plus 1 fourth sine of 2 theta, 0 to pi over 4. Remember, this is a video, so if you're confused by anything, you know always pause it, rewind, watch it again, because um, I go kind of quickly. And now I'm going to plug in. So plugging in pi over 4 is not the end of the world because the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. And then the sine of 2 times pi over 4 is the same as the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So not so bad. So it's going to be negative 1 eighth plus 1 half. Um, and there we go. So pi over 4 times 1 half is pi over 8. And then we said sine of pi over 2 is 1. So there. And then it's minus, uh, it turns out when you plug in 0, the tan of 0 is 0, um, theta is obviously 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. So uh, that all goes away, which is nice. And then this kind of magically simplifies to just pi over 16, and that's the value. So there you go. That's two examples of double integrals with polar coordinates. Uh, a lot of trig involved. Hope you found this helpful, and good luck.